This is Echo 3, and let's discuss reusable rockets. In this case, I'm going to make a simple pod that is capable of reaching low Kerbin orbit, performing a simple task such as rendezvous and docking with a space station, or deploying a satellite, or perhaps just performing some experiments there in low orbit, and then returning this entire second stage back to Kerbin. I'm going to do a few things a little differently. I am using an engine plate, so I can put more than one engine on this. Engine plates are just really helpful for that. Two parachutes will be enough to land this upper section in at least the water near the Space Center. I'm not positive about landing on the engine belts themselves. It's possible. It just might be a little rough. I wasn't positive, so I decided not to try that. The fins are to help keep the craft stable as it goes through some of the lower atmosphere before the parachutes deploy. Because I'm landing this entire upper section, it does tend to be a bit top heavy, and so the aerodynamics, it would want to face parachute side down, so the fins will help with that. Now we're gonna add the lower section, or the booster section for a rocket. I'm gonna be using some reaction wheels just to help with orienting the lower section and help with steering as the rocket ascends. This will need a little bit of extra power. It won't need any kind of power generation, like with solar panels or anything, it's not gonna be gone that long, but the batteries in just the probe core won't be enough. I'm gonna add a little bit of RCS as well, so I'm gonna put some fuel, and then we're gonna use a few blocks of RCS thrusters just to help with orienting the craft, especially since this is going to be in the atmosphere and I'm not positive that the reaction wheels will be able to do all of the stabilization for the rocket. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of RCS. I'm gonna be using an engine plate on this lower section as well. I was trying to decide what's the best engine combination for this. I do like the Vector. It is able to gimbal quite a bit, although I won't need its full gimbling abilities. So it helps keep this craft a little bit more stable. And then I'm gonna add eight of the Spark engines, giving me nine engines in total on the bottom. That seemed like a, a good number to use for a reusable booster. I'm gonna use the stock landing legs as well, put those on. This will be sufficient to land the booster on. Maybe I should have used six instead of four, but four is the bare minimum to land this booster safely. It will support the weight of it anyway. Now I need just to adjust my staging here. That should be pretty close to what we need. Let's see, one last thing. Let's go ahead and add some control fins to the top of this booster. This will help us guide the booster section to a more precise landing. We don't have access to grid fins, but we do have access to fins. Now let's go ahead and launch this craft. Make sure we have our SAS on. The thrust to weight ratio is just under 1.3 on the pad, so that's Pretty good, normally 1.3 is the number I like to shoot for, so it's accelerating just a little slower. Now for the ascent profile, with all the fins placed high on the craft, I need to stay inside the prograde vector. Normally I like to be pretty aggressive with my gravity turn, but since I want to return this booster back to the space center, I need to do a more shallow approach and it will make the flip back and boost back maneuver a little easier and I'll have enough Delta V then to land this safely back at the Space Center. If I needed to push this craft even more, I could go with a more aggressive gravity turn, and then there's a peninsula on the other side of this sea, and I can try to land there. I have done that before, and this craft is capable of doing that. I, I did it once while I was testing. It does work. My Delta V budget was very tight when I did that, but it left me with a lot more Delta V than in my upper section because the lower section accelerated the craft a lot faster. So what we've done is we have split the craft and I've gone back and I'm controlling the lower section. I'm gonna perform my boost back burn here. Now I'm gonna use a mod called Trajectories. You can do this without the mod. It's, it's possible. This just makes it lining up a lot easier. You can see that X there and that tells me where I'm predicted to land and trajectories is able to account for the effects of the atmosphere. So this will get me really close to the space center and then I can adjust as needed with my grid fins there or my fins. Now we're going to switch back 
to our upper section and we just need to get this into orbit. I'm just looking for getting my periapsis above 70 kilometers. Any maneuvers after that we can take care of, but the craft will be in a stable orbit and I won't have to worry about this craft. So once we burn enough and get my periapsis high enough, we'll switch back to the booster section and then we can try and land the booster section. I'd like to say that this was my very first attempt. It was not, nor was my second or third or even 10th attempt. It took me a lot of tries to get this right. And that's even with the helps with Kerbal Engineer and with the Trajectories mod. Part of that is I am running pretty tight on my Delta V margin. So I'm gonna be landing this thing pretty much on fumes. And if my piloting were just a little better, maybe I could have done this in fewer tries. So without mods, it may take even more tries, or maybe you're just better than I am at the game and are able to just factor this. Or if you give yourself a little bit more of budget on Delta V, maybe you can do this easier. But we have successfully landed our booster on the runway, which would then give us 100% recovery on funds if this were a career game. So that's a good reason to do this, is you can save funds. And if you are playing on a harder career mode where funds are pretty tricky to come by, it might be a good idea to try and recover your craft. And the way the game factors recovery cost is the closer you are to the Space Center, the more percentage of the craft you get back at recovery cost. You can also land exactly on one of the other launch sites for full funds, but if you land outside of the launch site, then you will get your percentage based off of the main Kerbal Space Center. So I'm going to aim for the Kerbal Space Center here as well, using the Trajectories mod to help. I'd like to land in the water, but really, really close. Fortunately, there is water there just past the end of the runway, and that is my goal for this craft. This is a little easier to land, pretty much I'm not trying to be so exact and I'm going to use parachutes. So parachutes help take away a lot of the margin for error because the craft is coming in much slower and in this case the craft doesn't even have to do any kind of slow down burn near the surface. So this will be pretty easy. Once we do our deorbit burn I may do a few small adjustments here in the lower atmosphere but I have Terry engines so they're not going to do a whole lot of work. And I can see we're already coming in pretty close. I'm going to probably make a small adjustment burns here. I can't do too much as the craft isn't overly stable, but the fins are helping keeping the craft somewhat stable so that my front end isn't pointing down, which then helps me slow the craft down more. If it were nose down, it would be accelerating some in the lower atmosphere. In this case, it is slowing down pretty well. And I can see that we are projected to land pretty much in the water here, just off the coast. That is great. That should be a safe landing then. I might as well use the last of our fuel, lighten the craft up. The speed is gonna be kind of on the margin, but it should be just about right. I am Echo3. Thanks for joining me on this discussion on reusable rockets. I will see you next time. And I am open to suggestions for future content.